Hello, welcome back to class. Today, we are going to be talking about how to solve quadratic equations. And this is part one of a two-part lesson. In this part of the lesson, we are going to talk about what a quadratic equation is, and we are going to solve equations of these forms. In the second part of the lesson, we are going to talk a little bit about how to solve quadratic equations by using the factorization technique and using the formula. Let's move on to solve quadratic equations in this form. A quadratic equation is an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. A cannot be zero. The equation must have a squared term. And for it to have a squared term, then this number a, its coefficient cannot be zero. A quadratic equation normally has two solutions and those two solutions are called roots. These roots may be distinct, that is, they are two different numbers, or it could be a repeated root, that is, the same number repeated, or the root can be complex. Let's look at this equation and see how we could possibly solve it. 5x squared minus 20x is equal to 0. So we need to find what number is being squared, so that when we multiply it by 5 and subtract 20, we get 0. The first thing we can do is to remove the 20 and regroup it to the other side of the equation. So we have 5x squared is equal to 20. Once we have done that, we can isolate our x squared by dividing both sides by 5. So we have now x squared is equal to 20 divided by 5, which is 4. So we can easily answer the question, which number when squared gives us 4? The answer is 2. To find that answer, we can take the square root of both sides of the equation. And so the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. But I just mentioned that a quadratic equation has two solutions. Let us look at this situation. Negative 2 square means that we take negative 2 and multiply it by itself, which gives us 4. Also, positive 2 square, we take that positive 2 and we multiply it by the other positive 2 and we get 4. So if we're asking ourselves which is the square root of 4, is it negative 2 or is it positive 2? Because when you square both numbers, you get 4. So the square root of 4 should be both negative 2 and positive 2. In reality, we often talk about the positive square root and not the negative one. In this topic, however, when you find a square root, you must write both answers. You can evaluate your answers later on depending on the situation and decide which answer makes sense given the situation. But for this purpose, our answers are both x equal 2 and also x equal minus 2. We have a shortcut way to write that, and that is we write x is equal to plus or minus 2, which is, me, which is to mean positive 2 and negative 2. Now let's look at this question, which has a practical application. A circle has an area of 314 square centimeters. What is the length of its radius? Well, the formula for finding the area of a circle is given as pi times the radius square is equal to area. Pi we can use as 3.14. So 3.14 times the radius square gives us 314. So as we did here, we must divide both sides by 3.14. By So we divide 314 by 3.14, and as you can see, r square is going to be equal to 100. So we find the square root of 100, and we find the square root of r square. So r here gives us plus or minus, positive or negative, 10. Because we're dealing with a practical thing such as length and area, 
we cannot use the negative root because a negative number does not describe a length. We cannot have a negative radius or a negative mile. So in solving this equation, we get these two numbers for our answers. In this particular question, the appropriate answer is r is equal to 10, as in centimeters, because we cannot use a negative 10 for a length. So you will have two numbers when you find your square root. Depending on the question, you evaluate both and see which makes sense. So in this question, we got a positive and negative 2. This is a theoretical question. Both must be written. In this question, which has a practical application, we find both our roots and we decide which root would make sense. And in this situation, it is a positive root that makes sense. Let's look at some more questions. What about this one? In solving x squared is equal to 100, what we did was to find, this, well, it was r, what we did was to find the square root of r squared is equal to the square root of 100, and r was equal to 10, or minus 10. This situation here is similar, even though it looks a little different. So imagine this as your x. So x squared is 36. So what we must do is find the square root of 36 and the square root of this side. Now let's find the square roots. So the square root of 2x plus 7 square is equal to the square root of 36, which gives us 2x plus 7 is equal to 6 or negative 6. We are going to break this situation into two equations. One will say 2x plus 7 is equal to positive 6, and the other will say 2x plus 7 is equal to negative 6. Once we solve these two resulting linear equations, we will find our answers to this equation. Now, many students will be tempted to multiply this bracket out, but this actual way to solve it is far easier. So we take our 2x is equal to 6. This is a plus 7, so we have minus 7. So here we have 2x is equal to negative 1. And dividing by 2, x is therefore equal to negative 1 over 2. Here, 2x is equal to negative 6 minus 7. So we have 2x is equal to negative 13. And dividing by 2, x is equal to negative 13 over 2. So our two solutions are x is equal to negative 1 half and x is equal to negative 13 over 2. We take that similar approach to this question, but first we need to reorganize the number on the other side. So 5 bracket x minus 3 square is equal to 0 plus 20. What we have therefore is 5 bracket x minus 3 square is equal to 20. We can now divide both sides by 5. Once we do that, we realize that x square, x minus 3 square, is equal to 4. And this is similar to what we had here. So we can proceed by finding the square roots of both sides x minus 3 square is equal to the square root of 4, which gives us x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 2. So we write our two equations, x minus 3 equal 2, and x minus 3 equal minus 2. Solving this equation gives us x is equal to 2 plus 3, so x is 5. And here, x is equal to minus 2 plus 3, so x is equal to 1. And these are our solutions for the quadratic equation. In this type of equation, we are going to use the factoring technique. That is, we are going to factor out the highest common factor and then decide what to do with our answer. So let's take out the highest common factor first. In this case, it is x. So x, we divide 3x squared by x and we get 3x. We divide 8x by x and we get 8. We close our bracket and that is equal to 0. Now, 
Right now, the question is saying x times the bracket gives us a zero. What are those cases where we multiply two numbers and get zero? One, either we say zero times zero gives us zero, or two, zero times another number a equals zero. So in the two cases where we multiply and get zero, either one, both of the numbers are zero, in which zero times zero is zero, or one of the numbers is zero, in, for example, zero times three equals zero, or three times zero equals zero. We are going to apply this fact to this. Since one or both of our numbers can be zero, we start by saying one either either x is zero or three x plus eight equals zero. Well, this is finished as it is. No need to go any further with that. But in this one, we have a simple linear equation that we need to solve. So we have three x is equal to zero minus eight. Three x is equal to negative eight. And solving this equation, dividing by 3, we have x is equal to negative 8 over 3. And our solutions, therefore, are x equals 0 and x equals negative 8 over 3. In our next example, we start by factoring out the x. So we have 5x minus 5 minus 4x, rather. Let me write that over. Writing down our common factor x, we're dividing 5x by x, we end up with 5. We're dividing minus 4x squared by x, we have minus 4x. And that is equal to 0. Once we have that, we apply this fact to it. So we can say either x equals 0, in which case we have a solution or 5 minus 4x is equal to 0. So in solving this, we can say 5 is equal to 4x by reorganizing the equation and then dividing by 4, which gives us x is equal to 5 over 4. And our two solutions, therefore, are x equals 0 and x equals 5 over 4. You will notice that in solving this type of equation, one thing is true. One of the solutions is always zero. Let's look at another equation. Here we have 2y squared equals 5y. And sometimes CXE will do this to see if you, the student, are thinking about what you're doing. So first we need to rewrite this 5y on the other side of the equation. So we start by saying 2y squared minus 5y equals 0, and now we can factor out our y. Once we do that, either, either y equals 0, or 2y minus 5 equals 0, in which case we are solving this linear equation, 2y is equal to 5, and y is equal to 5 over 2, which means that our solutions are y equals 0 and y equals 5 over 2. This question here does not even begin to look like a quadratic equation. But it is a quadratic equation. And we can multiply both sides by the LCM for u to remove the fraction. Or we can simply cross multiply it since it looks, it looks so nice and proper to cross multiply here. So we can start by saying u times u, which is u squared, is equal to 4 times 9, which is 36. Now this sets it up quite nicely, and all that we need to do is to find the square roots of both sides. So the square root of u squared is equal to the square root of 36, and therefore u is equal to plus or minus 6. This is how we solve equations of the form ax squared plus bx equals 0, and equations of the form x squared equals a. I hope you would have found this video beneficial. Thank you for watching.